welcome back, literary slummers, to another episode of Hate Read. I'm Anna. And I'm Em. Uh, some fortnights here on Hate Read, <laughs> <laughs> once in a while, we challenge each other to read a book that we think the other person will hate. Um, we haven't done that in what seems like millennia. In ages. And we <laughs> it's... will continue to not do that this week. <laughs> Uh, instead, we are reading a book that was suggested to us by a listener and also a podcasting friend, Kate from Pups and Pop Culture, mm-hmm. uh, sent us a tweet on the Twitter, as that is where tweets come from, <laughs> um, <laughs> suggesting that we read The Time Traveler's Wife by Still didn't remember to look up how to pronounce her name. I'm going to say Audrey Nefeniger because okay. that sounds the most plausible and least accidentally racist. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. I cut out a lot of the instances in the last Fortnite's episode of us trying yes, to pronounce that name. I'm very glad you did. Coming up with some pronunciations that could be used out of context to paint a bleak, bleak picture of us. <laughs> So, we read that book, uh, um, or or did we? Because uh, first things first, we need to ask each other, did we finish the book? I did. I did too. Kate, we thought you were nice. This book <laughs> was horrendous. <laughs> yeah, it was real poopy. <laughs> it was very bad. Yeah, so Kate sent us this tweet back in December that she said she hated it, but everyone she knows loves it. Okay, everyone you know is wrong and dumb because this book is bad. <laughs> this book was so bad. <laughs> and okay, to some extent, I do think this is another case where it's one of those books where I could have liked it or at least not like despised it, mm-hmm. except for like one fatal flaw. Yes, um, that just ruined the entire book. Because yeah, like so we we tweeted or not tweeted we. We texted a little bit about this book because it was just, it was over 500 pages, which is longer than our normal. Mm -hmm. So we, like, really had to push each other to get through this one. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But we we did text a little bit about how, like, it's kind of pretentious and the writing style is, like, a little bit too much, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I could have dealt with that and I could have been fine with that if it wasn't for... The big problem with this book. The humongous problem. Um, the humongous problem. You all know that here on Hate Read, we are, we we love to discuss inappropriate relationships and how, how inappropriate they are. I think this one takes the cake. This is atrocious. This, was this is disgusting. way worse than Laurel K. Hamilton and Anita Blake and her 16-year-old were-tiger or whatever. Yes. This is... Worse than that werewolf girl who hooked up. Well, that one was pretty bad, too. But not as bad as this one from uh, Blood and Chocolate. This was just... A, <laughs> this like, is the story of Henry de Tramble, a time traveler who goes back in time and grooms his wife from the age of six years old. Yes. that Like, there's no other way around it. I don't... It is... Ooh, oh, oh. It is <laughs> not okay. It's not okay in the least bit. It's not okay. I don't know why this book has such a high rating on Goodreads, and I don't know why more people aren't talking about how, like, this is not romantic. This is so gross. This is not romantic. Multiple people, and I mean, I guess I'll kind of get into this in the the synopsis, but, like, it justifies it so much. Mm -hmm. Like, multiple people are, like, at one point she tells her best friend, like, her best friend figures out that um, she saw Henry when they were younger, Mm -hmm. and... The main character, Claire, is like, oh, yeah, I didn't tell you about it, but we've been dating for, like, a really long time. Mm -hmm. And the friend is like, well, how come you didn't tell me? And Claire's like, oh, well, you know, the age gap, like, he's eight years older than me. Like, if I had told you, you would have freaked out. Like, I was 12. He was 20. (laughs) And the friend is like, no, no, that would have been fine. I would have thought thought it was hot. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Oh, my God. 12 year olds if you're listening please don't be listening number one we talk about wing wings a lot on we, this show yeah and but we, yeah <laughs> if you are listening if your friend comes to you and is like i'm dating a 20 year old tell them no tell their parents tell everybody tell social services tell everybody blow that guy's shit up because that is, that is not, not okay. okay not okay 
I don't care if they waited until they were 18 to have sex. That's not okay. He has been training her since she was six years old to be his wife. It's so gross. I don't know. This whole book. And then there was so much more after that to get mad about, too, because I guess we should kind of try and talk about yeah, how I this guess. book unfolds. Because it is the tale of a time traveler. It does not, it, there's not like a linear plot for most of the But book. I will say it's not as non-linear as I wanted it to be. Also, also that, yeah. Like, it was very jump around for the first, like, maybe 50 pages, but then it did kind of get into just, like, essentially their relationship in real time yes. with, like, him beeping and bopping in and out as needed. Yes. But it was pretty much linear. It was linear from his perspective pretty much from that point mm-hmm. out. Yes. It really kind of phased out that aspect of the time traveling. Mm-hmm. Or any of the fun aspects of, like, what would be interesting to a reader uh, yeah. to read about time traveling, like the time traveling parts. It was just the depressing parts. That was cool, too. Enjoyed that. <sighs> <laughs> so, okay. So Henry is a man who can travel through time, and it usually happens when he is stressed out. Um, because of, there's, like, there's some, like, BS genetic reason, like, it is written in his dna that he can do time traveling and that he's the possibly the new the next step in human evolution uh which all of the description of science seemed not really correct to me but i also don't know enough about genetics to like totally call bs but yeah it seemed very like it seemed very much like the author was expecting someone with my level of genetics to read this yeah. and be like, oh, I guess that's she how that works. She said chromosome, yes. <laughs> she said chromosomes, and she said CAG, and she mentioned Huntington's disease, and I know that's, that's, a, that's thing. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Seems legit. So he started traveling, time traveling when he was five years old, and his first experience time traveling was when an older version of himself meets up with his five-year-old self to take a tour of Field Museum. And from that point on, he kind of trains himself to be a criminal. Um, He trains himself how to pickpocket. He trains himself how to pick locks and beat people up and basically be able to get by in any scenario he could find himself in. Because another fun aspect of his time-traveling abilities is that he always appears naked wherever he is. So he usually has to steal, lie, and do bad things. Or prearrange with his friends to have clothes yes. around. But yeah. that only works sometimes. That only works in very specific instances where he's grooming a six-year-old to be his wife. <laughs> 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 and the other rule is that he normally, he usually travels back to times or people or places that are very important to him. So he uh, travels back to the, the traumatic experience of the death of his mother a lot of times. He visits Claire a lot throughout her life and his own. Um, Which, like, that doesn't make sense to me, though, because if, like, his whole thing is, like, oh, he he travels back to times that were important to him. Mm -hmm. He didn't know Claire as a six-year-old. Exactly. He didn't realize. So it's just he wanted to creep on his wife as a child, I guess, was, like, his inner, like, what? Okay, whatever. (laughs) Like, if you just don't justify it. Don't, don't have the thing about oh i had i time travel back to my dead mom all the time because it's an important yeah like yeah. thing in my life and then like keep going back again to this girl's childhood who you didn't know as a child except for the time tra- it's it's so, the way time traveling time works in this cyclical. makes blah, blah, no blah, blah. sense it doesn't make sense it really doesn't that's very bad they don't try to make it make sense they i'm sorry i know as always i'm just over here ranting <laughs> but at one point later in the novel, Claire's like, oh, do you ever try to change stuff? Uh-huh. And he's like, no, because it doesn't work. And I can't. Like, I physically can't. Right. But, like, nobody tests that. Nobody nobody tries. <laughs> like, maybe he can't, but, like, Claire could, right? Like, they do that thing where she's like, yes, here's this drawing I did. Um, what happens if I do something different with it? And he's like, I don't know. You shouldn't, though. And she's like, I'm just going to write the date on the bottom of it, even though the date isn't written on the and bottom of the real version of it in your present. And then, so then he goes back to present day, and he's like, hey, remember you wrote that date on that picture? And she's like, oh, no, actually, I didn't. I cut it off because I felt bad about possibly changing time. It's like, okay, cool. Because she was so worried that then she would somehow butterfly affect it yeah. into them not being married. And I'm like, 
well, that should be okay. Like, yeah, that is totally fine. That should be the goal. <sighs> so I can't Claire. I guess we talked about her enough. Claire is his <laughs> wife, future wife. <sighs> She first meets Henry when she is six years old. He appears naked to her in a meadow that her that is part of her family's estate. Estate. Yes. <laughs> they she's very rich and they the family owns a huge house and a lot of land. Um and servants. Yeah, and they have servants. Um and so Henry recognizes who Claire is, obviously. And so he I guess he just decides to befriend this younger version of his wife and teach her things and introduce her to poetry and by like saying like oh this is what we like in the future this is our favorite thing in the future so you should like it now and basically like she does complain about this once in the book like you're making me feel like a freak because you're telling me what I like as opposed to letting me discover that I like it um so maybe that was a red flag. You should have like headed out then, Claire. But to be fair, that she was a child, and it's not like she could have got away from this That's sexual true. predator. That's true. you know she did live there, and he knew where she lived, and all of her secrets and everything. So and everything about her. Yeah. And <laughs> if you took away the time traveling aspect of this, it would be a, it would be a, a it would be a horror like book. true crime yeah, book, yeah right like yeah. it's like <laughs> like you but way worse. Yeah, it's insane that this is a romance. <laughs> so she goes to a sleepover at her friend's house, and they're doing a Ouija board, and they ask the Ouija board um, who Claire or who likes Claire, and the Ouija board spells out Henry, and then like completely on its own with no one even touching the board, it also spells out husband. So she goes and asks Henry, and he... Which, this is never explained. It's never explained, yeah. There is... Is there more than time traveling? Like, is, is there a Are paranormal there element to this? Like, it's never explained. Is Henry... I bet it was Henry who came back from... It's Henry's ghost. Yes, Henry's ghost <laughs> came back, and he wrote, Husband. <laughs> oh. So this ends up with her asking Henry... Um, and kind of like having, like crying because she, she's like asking questions about his wife and being really vague about it. And Henry is also trying to be really vague about who his wife is. And she ends up crying being like, I thought I was going to be your wife. So I guess basically he admits to it when she's 12. Um, so I, from here on out, she, um, I guess has a romantic attachment to him. I mean, obviously she probably had a crush on him before him, but now it's much more serious. Eventually evolving into her spending the majority of her teenage years trying to have sex with Henry. Um, they refer to each other as boyfriend and girlfriend by the time she's like 16 or so. Um, and keep in mind, he's like in his late thirties this whole time that he's interacting and with 40s her. And forties. Yeah. And sometimes forties. And then they find finally... he he's not coming back chronologically. Like sometimes he's coming back. Like he'll be, it'll be, she's 12 and he's 43. And then like two years later, she's 14 and he's 38 or whatever. Cause mm -hmm. he's just, bopping about in the time stream yes yes <sighs> that's very stupid <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh they finally bang it out on her 18th birthday yay it's like really Great. weird like so glad that they did that she's dressed in all white and um well we're giving it we're given the perspective of henry like we're in the part of the story where he and Claire are older, they've been married for many years, and he, um, I guess they're sleeping, and he bounces back to Claire's 18th birthday, and they have sex, and somehow, like, this information has never been presented to Henry before. Like, he did not know that they had sex on Claire's 18th birthday. Um, and he spends, like, a lot of time admiring her body and talking about how like beautiful mm -hmm. and perfect and young it is mm -hmm. which is I mean there's also the bit when she's like 13 and he's like Henry try I tried not to look at her new titties and whatever oh like, yeah okay, like it's her... not phrased quite that way but... so eloquent this book <laughs> she was starting to get boobs and I liked it <laughs> but I tried not to look because I'm a good guy like I'm it's like no you aren't oh disgusting uh so then they have sex and then he goes back 
like, I guess immediately after they're done having sex, goes back to his present day and tells his wife, like, why didn't you tell me we had sex? Um, and then they have sex in the present day as well, I guess. Anyway, long story short, grooming. It's all grooming. <laughs> It's not okay. It's not right. This should it's not be romanticized in any way whatsoever. Gross. That's just, it's not, I hate, I hated it. It was just, I can't even form like a coherent thought about it because it's just, it's just bad. I was it's like just, throwing up in my mouth the whole time I was reading it. It's not good. And then like, cause again, a lot of that stuff is kind of front loaded in the book, except for that scene about her 18th birthday, yes. which isn't until way later. Yeah. And that's kind of how... Like, I'd get to this, like, I'd be reading, I'd be like, okay, this isn't so bad. I still don't like these characters for a lot of reasons, mm-hmm. and I still think this book is pretentious, but, like, okay, I can, you know, like, I can get through this. And then, oh, we'd get thrown back to Claire's 18th birthday and them having sex, and I'd be reminded that this guy, like, <laughs> groomed this child. It's like, I know, it's so bad. And I wanna, I wanted to ask you, uh, kind of mm-hmm. taking a step away from the synopsis for a second, do you think if you were a time traveler? Yes. That because she, the author, mentions in the foreword, she says something about like, oh, since this book came out, I've had a lot of people write to me and say stuff like, I wish I could have known my significant other when they were a kid. Mm-mm. Which that seems insane. But Gross. if you were a time traveler, what level of like seeing your past? Significant, your significant other's past yes. do you think is acceptable um i would go through uh most embarrassing moments and then okay. come back to present day and be like remember that time you thought no one saw you do that <laughs> see i think it's not a, it's a it's a one and done you can visit their past selves once, once and yeah anything more than that is stalking ah, it's a temporal little true, yeah. stalking and you need to stop <laughs> Like, you show up in that meadow, walk the other way. You don't have to engage in this. I get that you don't have control over where you bip bat through time. Uh-huh. But walk walk away. Like, walk away. <laughs> Go somewhere else. Hide in the forest. Don't, don't engage with this give child. give her every date that you're scheduled to appear yes. for the next 12 years. It's bizarre that this, is, that this book is billed as a romance. It's so gross. <laughs> Because, so then we have that, which was very, like, gross and disgusting to read. But then we come to the present day where Claire, where Henry meets Claire for the first time in his timeline. And basically, he's just, like, a fucking wreck. He's an alcoholic. He's just, like, he, he sleeps around a lot, which, that's fine. That's a personal choice. But to him, he's, like, that's kind of makes him a bad guy in his eyes. He's just, like... He's just a mess. And then he meets Claire and Henry's future self tells Claire that it is her job Mm -hmm. to mold him into a good man, to be the man he's supposed to be when Claire meets him for the first time when she is six years old. Mm -hmm. What? Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yep. I guess. Okay, cool. So now she's like, Almost grooming him, yes. but like in a in a also gross like because she is told that she has to wait, which oh yes, oh my God. it's so <laughs> stupid. Because this gross. man that she meets is in no way like her past future Henry. Like here's here's how I wish this book had gone mm-hmm. right. We can do the same thing all the way up to this point. And this guy comes back and is like, you need to fix me. You need to make me better. Mm -hmm. So she, like, starts trying to do this stuff to, like, fix him and make him better. Uh And, like, a few years go by. It gets to the point where they would be, like, getting married whatever. And then she's like, no, I have any amount of self-respect. This guy has groomed me from childhood. I need a therapist not to get married to this dude. And leaves. And then Henry goes into, like, a downward spiral and is, like, like, ten years later, he's like, oh, man you know, who could fix me, Claire, and, like, goes back and begs Claire to, like, stay with him and fix him. And that's really the stable time loop is just that it's, like, she, they were never married. He just was trying to get her to marry him to fix him. Yes. But, like, never. It never never happened. Because that's gross and creepy and wrong. (laughs) Which, like, 
I understand the point this book is trying to make. Like, our lives are so entwined, and isn't that romantic? Like, I'm not me without you, and you're not you without me, and blee, blee, blue, blue, blue. But to the extent that this book has taken it is completely outrageous and unacceptable. (laughs) And I think it kind of gets into this a little bit, that it's almost like a feminist critique, right, of, like, oh, men are allowed to go off and do things and live Mm -hmm. lives and leave, and women are expected to come to wait for them. Uh Uh-huh. Like, it could have been that. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was romanticized. spoiler alert, she's fine. She ends up essentially being fine with waiting for him. Like, she's like, well, this is just just my lot in life. This is just what I have to do, is I have to wait around for my time-traveling dingus of a husband to come back. Not to say that Claire was great, because she was fucking terrible, too. She was a garbage person. But, yes. like, they both were garbage people. I hated them both so much. They're, they were not likable in the least bit. They were not likable. And it was so confusing because they kept saying stuff like, oh, why do I end up falling in love with you? Oh, because you're so good. You're so good. And this is something we've seen before in romances, right? Mm-hmm. Where they, they ask why the other person is in love, and they say, oh, because you're good. Or, and it's like you're my light. Yeah, and it's, like, based on what, though? Yeah. Because from what I see, they do nothing to help anyone else ever in their lives they're terrible to the people around them they're terrible to their friends they're terrible to their family they're pieces of shit and they aren't good people and why are we acting like they are they're terrible (laughs) they're garbage they're trash i hate them but she's an artiste she's an artist and she makes paper and we get to talk about the processes by which paper is made i'm like this is so boring i don't care she's garbage i hate her And I think the book, like, tries to explain it away, like, look how bad both of their childhoods were. But then, like, make them better people, not worse. I don't, and and also, like, (laughs) I will say, I think, for me especially, her relationship with her mother frustrated the shit out of me. It was bizarre. Because, like, it was so bizarre. Because, like, okay, so her mom tried to kill herself when when Claire was young. Mm Mm-hmm. She was the one that found her mom. And she found her mom. Right. Um... And that is traumatic. I will give you that. But then, like, Claire, as an adult, shows, like, no sympathy towards her mom. She, like, she's, like, she's a spaz. She's crazy. Like, she mm-hmm. uses, like, really loaded language to talk about her mom. Yes. Um, and it's, like, no. Like, legit, she needs therapy. She needs to be on medication. Like, I assume she might have been. I don't know. But then, like, so that's, like, all we ever see of Claire's interactions with her mom is that, like, she kind of dislikes her mother, is what it seems yeah. like. And is, like, really rude about the fact that she's suffering from a mental health problem. And then her mom dies from ovarian cancer. And Claire's like, oh, I'm so sad. I loved her. She was the best thing in my life. I'm like, yeah. no, you didn't. Yes. Stop. Well, and then she, like, she's she's in this, like, this weird funk where she's just, like, seems completely numb to everything but then she finds like her mom wrote her a poem and she's like oh finally i have proof that she loved me like (laughs) okay maybe you would have had proof of that sooner if you ever like talked to your mom or tried to bond with her at all like (laughs) right no scenes of that like there's no like scenes of her seeking approval from her mom or anything like she just seems totally detached and un yes uh, like unappreciative of her whole family which i mean like on and that's the thing i'm like you know she did have this traumatic incident with her mom as a kid Mm -hmm. if she just wanted to go no contact with her mom like i would get that if she wanted to just not really deal with her mom like i would be like that's fine Mm -hmm. but it's like very disingenuous like you said for her to be like that way all through her mother's life and then her mom dies and she's like oh thank god my mom loved me it's like you're the one who was instigating the like not talking to like the yeah not having a relationship thing it seems like also what was the deal and maybe i missed it because there's a lot of purple prose in this book and it was confused like a lot um so there was maybe some stuff that i kind of didn't quite get Uh uh-huh but what was with Claire's relationship with her father and brother? Did she just hate them because they were lawyers? Was that the deal? I did not understand the tension because at first it seemed like they were going to try and frame the older brother, Mark, as like, like kind abusive. of a sociopath yeah. type. And the dad is like abusive in some sort of way, like you said. But no, it was just kind of like the dad 
wanted what was best for his kids and didn't necessarily know how to connect with them and so it came off as kind of harsh sometimes and then the brother just seemed like he was very arrogant and only cared about himself and his ways and he got a girl pregnant and married her and like that was his there was no like there was a weird throwaway line in the beginning of this book that Mm -hmm, yeah where henry said something about how claire did not have a lot of love in her life but there was no evidence of that later scene in the book like it was just like everyone's it just seemed like normal family yeah, that maybe family they stuff. were trying to like ignore mom's mental health issues but she certainly had lots of love in her life yeah and like her relationship with her sister was bizarre too it was like yeah she like seemed it seemed like they were on good terms but then like occasionally she'd say stuff like oh she was so like she hate like she couldn't believe she would do this and like i'm like what did she do like she didn't do anything i don't yeah. understand there it was just, just so like, much tension in those scenes, but for no reason. For nothing happened. Like, mm-hmm. I was so confused. I'm like, maybe I just don't understand rich people. Like, I don't know. Like, what is the deal here? I, I had no idea. <laughs> and they so seemed weird. very welcoming to Henry, too, was the other mm-hmm. thing. I was like, there was never any, like, okay, they didn't want them to sleep in a room together before they were married, but... So that's pretty normal that... for, like, Midwestern families in the yeah. you know, 90s. Like, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, I did not understand her angst with her family. In the least bit. Yeah. Like, Henry's at least kind of made sense. His mom died traumatically in front of him, and then Mm -hmm. his dad didn't take care of him. Yeah, his dad couldn't stand the side of him because he looked exactly like his mom. Like, Like, okay, okay. that's really trite, but okay. Like, it's valid, I guess. Yeah. Um, But then, like, he had, like, Mrs. Kim, who basically became a surrogate mother to him. Yes. Who he then, like, goes on to not talk to for extended periods of time in his adulthood, which is really shitty not so again it just seems like these two they just made up these problems for themselves expect everyone to give them everything and they don't have to do anything in return yeah yeah and it's just like (laughs) yeah (laughs) i made a face (laughs) you guys couldn't see but it was it was very like it really summed up all of our feelings about this and i'm sorry you couldn't see the face yeah (laughs) oh so where were we in the actual plot of this book? Oh right, there wasn't a there plot. There wasn't this one. Book. The two of them meet and then basically what follows is a normal, if not sad, life that's accented by bouts of time traveling. But nothing fun hap again, nothing fun happens in the time traveling. It's not like he's going back to like be a knight in Europe or whatever. Yeah. And it's also it's not just time traveling, it's time traveling and like traveling through space. So Yes, yes. It's, it's not weird. really time traveling, in my opinion. It's something else. But yeah. um yeah, he like doesn't go anywhere interesting. It's just no. back to his childhood, Claire's childhood, a little bit in the future, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's very like it's not interesting. And yeah. I mean like the only fun thing he does with it is he gives his friends stock tips. And then mm. he, like, cheats at the lottery one time to buy themselves a house. Yeah. And that's, like, the and, only fun things he does with his house. And he knows about 9-11, but warns no one about 9-11. Yeah, it doesn't tell anyone about 9-11. And then so, also, you know, great person. He looks up the date of his death. Mm. Which... And he looks up his um, doctor's kid's uh, date of birth so that he can tell the doctor. Oh, yeah, that was a creepy. That whole situation... So he's trying to get, like, this geneticist to, like, help him. And he knows the geneticist will help him because the future, in the future, the geneticist and him are friends and the geneticist helps him. Yes. Um, But so he looks up the doctor's kid's birth certificate so that he can give him an envelope with all the information about his kid so that that will prove the time travel thing. Yes. Including the fact that his son has Down syndrome, which, A, wouldn't be on a birth certificate. (laughs) And, B, seems, like, unnecessary when you have all the other information and just kind of, like, I don't know, maybe you should have told him then so he could, like, mentally prepare for it. Because they frame it as, like, oh, man, it... Like, it it shocks him, and it's so terrible, and he's so upset about it because he had the genetic screening done and whatever, and they mixed up the results, and he's so upset. And I'm like, if this is how he's going to (laughs) react, maybe you should have told him, like, a few months in advance so Mm -hmm. he could, like, deal with it. (laughs) 
Because that's kind of like Henry's whole thing. He knows all these terrible things that will happen, but he refuses to tell anybody because he wants everything to be normal. And I'm like, no, you are a bad person for not telling your friends and family that these terrible things will happen so they can mentally prepare themselves. If we are to accept that it is a stable time loop and you can't change anything, that's fine. But you should still tell them. You should tell them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Or you should at least ask, hey, I have some bad news regarding X. Do you want to know about it? Instead of just being like, mm, I'm not going to tell you that. I know nothing. I you know, don't like, he breaks yeah, his own rule a couple times anyway, because first he tells Claire's, Claire how her mom is going to die. Mm-hmm. And then there was another instance. He oh, tells Ben. He tells Ben that, that he's not going to die from AIDS, which I guess that was, was kind of a nice thing. That was the one. Well, and that's the thing. That was the one moment in this book that I was like, I like this. I was mm-hmm. like, if this was a short story, this scene would have been into it. Yeah. I was like, because Ben, I loved his whole thing. Like, he was great. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, that moment of Henry realizing that he could help another human being, like, achieve some level of peace and, like, comfort. Uh Uh-huh. Was, like, lovely. But the rest of the time, he's just like, like I'm not going to tell you guys. I thought you would have Because of some imposed rule that I have made up that doesn't matter because I've already said this is a stable time loop. (laughs) So I'm just not telling you to be a dick. He's like, like, the only way that you can have free will is if you don't know about the future, which I mean, it's not really, I don't know. That's a long philosophical debate. I guess we could have, but (laughs) I don't want to. Uh, I thought your, your favorite part of the book was going to be the part where um, Henry reveals that as a teenager, he had a lot of sex with himself. Oh yeah, I was a fan of that too. <laughs> Although I don't it followed think, I your don't, rule. I, yes, exactly. I don't think that it was actually having sex with himself. I think it was just masturbating together. Because oh, like, I thought they were actually having sex. I'm not sure because his dad. Well, I guess his dad does said, know about the time travel. So yeah, I guess they were probably just fucking. Yeah, because he but says yeah, they're was, found in in fl- in flagrante. Mm, in flagrante. Yeah. In flagrante. How do you pronounce it? I've only ever seen it written. In flagrante. There you go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, that was I was pro that scene. That was good. <laughs> but then, but then he has to ruin it by saying, "But it wasn't like I was gay." Yeah, that was lame. That was very bad. But I mean, not to excuse it. But I mean, this book was written in two thousand three, so that was more like there was a lot of weird people sucked back then. I guess <laughs> racial stuff too, specifically not even like racist notice. stuff, but just uh-huh. like every single character she described as like what their country of origin was to like uh-huh. a degree that I'm like, I don't, I would never, like, she's like, Oh, he looked very Slavic. Oh, she looked very Italian. Oh, she looked like she was from the Caribbean. I'm like, why, what are you talking about? Like, there's like one point where she says someone dances in a German, like a German way. And I'm like, what, what does, does that, that mean? mean? I don't know. Maybe that meant something in the early two thousands and I just wasn't, but there was a lot of, like, everybody right, got described by, like... everywhere. Yeah, I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> no idea. It was weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, Henry and Claire try to have a baby, but they can't because of his time-traveling genes or something. And Yeah. So there's the a baby very... keeps trying... The fetus keeps trying to time-travel oh out of Claire's God. womb, is what happens. Yes. How tr- how horrific to think of that, first of all. Mm-hmm. Because Henry didn't time travel for the first time until he was five. Right. So, anyway. Also, um, <laughs> if... <laughs> just, okay. <laughs> Stay with me for this. Oh, my God. If this time travel involves just, like, <laughs> like we said, hopping about willy-nilly, no uh-huh. rules, you end up wherever. Uh-huh. Couldn't there have theoretically, maybe not with their kid, because spoiler, they do have a kid, but she has more control over the time travel. But with like Henry, mm-hmm. if he gets pulled back to these important moments, couldn't there be a moment where like fully grown Henry ended up inside his mother's womb? <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I want that scene. Where's that scene from this <laughs> week? <laughs> um, 
so we had to read this terrible slog of book where it talks about the seven different miscarriages that Claire has. And it's all seven just Seven like... days of miscarriage. <laughs> it's just very, like, depressing. Mm-hmm. And, like, we get and it. gross. <laughs> a, lot of de- like, a lot of descriptions of, like, blood bloody fetuses on the bed next to Claire like them she's a lot of really bad dreams and stuff yeah no like that happens in real life a couple times oh really I thought that was a dream sequence no there's like two times there's one time where the baby time like it's like almost the last one where it's like Mm -hmm. almost ready to go Mm -hmm. like time travels outside of her womb and is like on the bed next to her oh my god I thought and she's like what what do (laughs) and calls Henry and then like the baby dies because of course it would (sighs) It's just fucking brutal to read. Like, why, what was the purpose of doing that to your characters and your readers seven times? And then Henry time travels from the future oh and my tells God, this... Claire, like, don't give up. You're going to get a baby eventually. Yeah. Oh, so he does that and then goes to get a vasectomy because he's afraid Claire will die if she has another miscarriage. And But she is so, like, baby focused and baby hungry that she won't stop trying. Won't stop, can't stop. And she, they have that lovely conversation where he's like, let's adopt, which is what most sane people would say, uh-huh. probably before even miscarriage number one, probably if your husband is a genetic time traveler, you'd be like, yeah, let's adopt. We should probably do let's, that. Let's adopt. But Claire's like, I don't want it to be pretend. Which, fuck Claire. Yeah, like, Claire's fuck Claire. a piece of Claire's garbage. Claire's garbage. This is what I'm saying. Neither of them are good people. No. The fact, I mean, like, I get it. You might have a desire to be a biological parent, and I get that, and it's fine. And mm-hmm. you can, I don't think there's anything wrong with people who, like, don't want to adopt because they would prefer to be a biological parent. Mm-hmm, but to mm-hmm. say that adoption is pretend is it's rude and trashy. Like, you're garbage. Rude. Yes. <sighs> so she. <laughs> Just thinking about this next part, and it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> so, so Henry gets the vasectomy without telling Claire. And then a past version of Henry. Time no, travels. First, first, she has another miscarriage. The, yeah, first she, she was a, pregnant before the yes. vasectomy. Yes. And then a past version of Henry, time travels. To the present day, and has sex with Claire, and that results in their baby. What? <laughs> First of all, I just like I don't know how I feel about this because no, it's not like it's not cheating, I guess, mm. but it's still like unsettling to me. Maybe I'm just, like, not woke enough to the time-traveling lifestyle. Yeah, I think, honestly, if I was in a relationship with a time-traveler, I would accept that having... I think that I would be cool with having relations Mm -hmm. with multiple... Iterations? Iterations, yes. (laughs) Um, Of age. (laughs) Of age. Granted that all of those iterations were post the time that we had met. Yes. That's so like fair. Yes. again, I would be okay with this situation of past husband mm-hmm. coming and having sex with me, but I would not be okay with forty three year old husband going back and having sex with eighteen year old me. I would not be cool with that. <laughs> that is not cool. That's not cool. That's not cool. Well, and then, let me ask you this then: What if, what if your past spouse came to the future to have sex with you, but your mm-hmm. present day spouse was still sleeping? right next to the two of you while you were doing it how oh, would I that would change anything <laughs> wake up present day spouse and have a threesome obviously but she doesn't she just looks at him during which is like what <laughs> oh it was oh, she... so weird it was a choice and i didn't care for it um they have a baby its name is alba and it can also time travel Yay. Which Henry realizes when he travels to the future and he meets her on accident and she's like, you died when I was five years old. And all the readers are like, yes, <laughs> yes, it's coming. 
<laughs> we only got to get through five more years of this. Oh, thank God. I know. That's what I was thinking at that point, too. I was like, there is an end point. But then I realized time travel, so it might be longer than five years. Spoiler, it was. So a bunch of nothing happens, but this is how Henry dies. <laughs> There is an instance where he time travels. Oh my god, I repressed this. It's so stupid. Oh my god, his feet. Yes, it's oh hilarious god. and stupid. He time travels so to the dumb. to a parking garage and is locked inside an empty guard booth. And he calls that present day version of himself and he's like, hey, come get me, bring clothes, whatever. That version of Henry and Claire go and they drive around the parking garage, but they can't see Henry because he has proceeded to lay down and fall asleep inside the guard booth where he ends up getting hypothermia and loses his feet to frostbite because remember, he was completely naked. Again, so, okay, so just to map this out for you playing along at home, Mm -hmm. we have Henry A, who is living his life and gets this call to come pick up himself from the future in the guard booth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So future Henry knows that present day Henry mm-hmm, mm-hmm. will not be able to find so him. So I don't know. Write a note. Tape it to the window. What are you doing? I get it. Well, it's, it's a just stable like time loop. Awake. It's a stable time loop. But like, it's like essentially that just is being used to hand wave so much stupidity in this book. Like you're telling me he couldn't stay awake for like the 30 minutes it took them to get their shit together and drive to the parking garage. I mean, I guess if you're like kind of freezing to death, maybe that's a problem. I don't know. I've never tried it. So I, I, I haven't personally know. tried. <laughs> but again, write a note, leave a note. Like it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Or yeah. Or just like. I don't do know. anything. Do literally. anything different. You anything dumb piece of shit. Like So But we can't because stable time loop. Yeah. And there's no explanation of what he does in other instances where he time travels once he has no feet. But one day, when he has no feet, he time travels back to Claire's childhood to a day where her brother and dad are out hunting. And I guess they mistake his naked footless body for some kind of animal because they they just shoot him. And then I think he maybe time travels. Here's the thing. And I was confused about this and maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think, first of all, I think he time traveled twice to this point. Yes, he was there twice. Mm Because he saw everything and knew this was going to happen, which, again, makes him an idiot. Mm -hmm. Um, A hundred percent. I think he time traveled like right into they were taking a shot at something. Uh, Okay. So I think he just kind of caught the bullet. I'm not sure, though. Wow, that's really, like, someone really wanted him to die. Because yeah, literally me. he can time travel me. to anywhere, anytime, place. This is a stable time loop, and I went back in time <laughs> and told the author that this is what needed to happen. And so <sighs> she wrote it this way. Yes, it is. It, you just really wanted to manipulate your readers into being super sad for no reason. Mm. It's so pointless. So that day that he is shot... In his current timeline, it is New Year's Eve, and they're having a huge New Year's Eve party, and all he invites all of their friends and family that they care about. He time travels around midnight to that incident where he gets shot, and then time travels back and just is, like, naked and bleeding out on their living room floor. Which, again... And everyone's just, like, staring. <laughs> gets to the point that even if henry has no control when he's time traveling whatever has no free will stable time loop whatever Mm -hmm. he is still an idiot and a dick because why would you do this to everyone exactly you are garbage you have ruined new years for them for the rest of all time for everyone you know um because you wanted to say goodbye to everyone at once like you couldn't have had like a new year's eve eve party right you could have just done this or a christmas Christmas henry yeah you could have but you didn't because you just wanted everyone to be traumatized because you suck. Yep. 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 And then, so he's dead. But before he died, he wrote Claire a letter that says, Hey, I'm about to die. And I'm sorry you waited your whole life for me to show up and stuff. But also wait a little bit longer because I'm going to visit you when you're old. But he's like also like, but he's also like, live your life. Don't wait for me. But do. But do. But don't. <laughs> but don't. But do. But like, do. But do. Don't too much, but, but do a don't. little. Yeah, yeah. Please wait. No, no, no. You don't have to, but 
please wait. Also, again, I had this whole conversation with you when you're 80. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want it to be a surprise for you. So just wait so, for that, I guess. He, now you really do have to wait because I'm not going to tell you. Isn't that cool? Does cool, that get cool. you excited? Cool, 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 you're like 37 cool, cool, cool. right now. Can you even handle waiting almost 50 <laughs> years for me again? I'm dead. Also, I died in a traumatic way. Also, by the way, I'm going to continuously pop up in our child's life as oh she my gets God, older, yes, but never I'll yours. Never see you. Because I'm garbage. Oh and God. I'm not going to give you a list of like what those times are so you could maybe be prepared and come visit like I did when you mm-hmm. were a child. Mm-hmm. Basically, I just don't. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'd rather. I hate you now. My, Basically, we, you were kind of too old for me now at 37. You're definitely going to be too old for me in a few years, so I'm not really interested anymore. <laughs> so I'll just pop in to say bye when you're 80. Yep, yep. Enjoy that. I'm like a harbin, harbin, harbinger, harbinger, harbinger of your death now as well. Yeah. So then he does that, and he pops in when she's And assumably 80. they have sex, because I, that's all they did together was have sex. Yes, because they were garbage. And oh so terrible. God. Oh my god! But I we forgot don't, we don't... all about that scene until just now, where in their early twenties, Claire's like, "Do other people have this much?" Sex? Oh my god! Because I hate it. it's painful, and I I can't even sit down sometimes because of all the sex we're having. We're just banging so much, we just babe. Have so much sex, and Henry's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, but also you should have fucking told me." What? Right? Because he's a creeper a and a sexual abuser who groomed a child. And the only reason that he never gets called out for his bullshit is because no one realizes, I guess, that that's what happened. Or they do realize and they don't care. I hate it. Oh, and we totally skipped over the whole part where Claire, um, the whole subplot where Claire has a best friend named Charisse who she's roommates with. And she is in a long-term relationship with a guy named Gomez. Um, And they end up as... They go along, Gomez and Sharice get married and have kids and whatever in our established relationship. Gomez and Claire had like a one off thing when Claire was like 18. Mm -hmm. And then they fuck on the kitchen counter while like Sharice and the kids are out after (sighs) Henry dies. And it's like, okay, cool. Glad we did that. (laughs) Glad that's a thing. 100% awesome. Like, what was the what was the point? What and the yeah, point? well, the point was so that we could have this like weird tension of Gomez being in love with Claire for her whole life, but then nothing ever coming of it. Mm-hmm. And Claire being like not able to move on past, I because th- I think that's uh, like Henry's like, you know, move on, live your life. And then like the only scene we have of her attempting to do that is a terrible because it's with her best friend's husband, and b she doesn't succeed because she like starts calling Henry's name in the middle of it, and Gomez is like, oh, boner killer. I hate it. Oh, I hate you it. gotta I'm leave mad. now. I'm mad. Which can we talk about? He was a garbage person too. I oh yeah, garbage he was in the this book. worst. He was so terrible. He was like every terrible proto anarchist, like freshman you meet in college who thinks they have the entire world figured out. And it's like you don't. Like you need to stop. Just because you read Marx, like <sighs> just Cliff Notes, think, doesn't yeah. make you smart. <laughs> And there was so much of that. It was just like, like we kind of, I said earlier, it's, and like you've said in text, like it was just so pretentious. Yeah. So much like name dropping of, you know, oh, art, culture, whatever, this, that. I think the moment that I was just like about ready to throw the, well, not the book because I didn't have it, but the Kindle across the room. <laughs> I had the book. Ugh. <laughs> was when um, the, it's like kind of in the middle of the book and mm-hmm. they've talked a few times about how Claire's not good at cooking. And it's like, Claire made herself a peanut butter and kiwi jam sandwich because she couldn't cook. And I'm like, what? Why kiwi jam? <laughs> why not just regular? Like, what? <laughs> like, why did you need to include that detail? <laughs> I hate you. It's so fucking, <laughs> fucking weird. kiwi jelly. I was like, what is this? Oh, I, I don't think you can even buy kiwi jelly. Like, I think you have to make that shit. <laughs> there was so many, like... Stupid details. So again, like this book was over five hundred pages long. It was, it and it was been a filled with story. so many stupid details like that. It was so. I can't believe I actually read this whole book. Like honestly, I know, right? Oh man. So in in this book, was there anything that you enjoyed? What was your silver lining? 
I mean, I like time traveling. And it would have been cool if it wasn't so gross. Mm -hmm. And that's what... That's what I thought going in was that this was a book about like a guy who time travels great distances yes, far I thought away. Be like, yeah. And like again, maybe met childhood wife once. Yeah. Not like consistently, consistently for eighteen years. Well not eighteen, twelve years. I, yeah, I thought it was gonna be like a lake house kind of situation, mm-hmm. I guess. Which, that's not great either. No. <laughs> but at least they're all adults. Yes. Very true. <laughs> I don't know. What was your silver lining? Was that it? You also like time travel? or? Uh, yeah, I like time travel. I Like I said, there were kind of like moments in this book where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I'm kind of enjoying it because like stuff is sort of happening now. Mm-hmm. But there was just so much time in between stuff happening, and I just hated the characters so much. Um, the only characters I liked were Sharice and Ben, so they were probably like my silver lining because they uh-huh. were – Ben was like um, – this guy who was suffering. Was he an actual pharmacist or? I don't know, but he got like... drug. I think he was because I think he got drugs from being a pharmacist. Okay, okay. Because stuff was less regulated, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, he got Henry drugs. Essentially, he was Henry's dealer. But he also mm-hmm. had lived through the AIDS crisis and was like dealing with HIV and wanted to know like what his life was going to be and whatever and like seemed like a really interesting character with like wasn't terrible and I yeah. didn't want to punch in the face all the time and Sharice was cool she was fine she wasn't yeah really much she was anything, a really good but... friend to someone who was a really big dick mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah also this just occurred to me because I did block it from my memory do you remember the scene where Henry goes back in time to 16 year old Claire and beats up that boy yes oh my god I can't believe we didn't talk about that I can't believe oh we didn't talk about that I forgot god. about it completely okay yeah so rewind slightly. We'll come back to our, our segments in a second. <laughs> uh, there is a point in this book where Claire tries to go out with one of the boys in her year because that is a normal thing to do. Um, and I guess she didn't put out for this guy, so he drove her to a remote cabin. Sorry, my phone just went off. He drove her to a remote cabin. And then just beat the shit out of her. And, like, burned a cigarette out on her boob. Hit her with a belt. Like, just, like, I don't, oh, it was weird. And then, so he did that. And then she tells Henry about it and makes Henry, like, retaliate. So he and Claire go to his house. He beats the shit out of this guy. And they tie him to a tree. And Claire writes a message on his chest about, like, this is what he did to me. And then they invite all of the girls in their year to go and look at him tied up to the tree. And then finally someone cuts him down. But, like... And then she, like, shows off her bruises in the locker room to the girls so they know it's legit. Yeah. And then they all applaud her. Which... Like, literally. <laughs> um. So there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> Number one. I don't know why any of this was necessary. Like, I don't know what did it add to the story. We got through the whole synopsis without talking about it. The only reason we're talking about it now is because it was so fucking bizarre. Yes. Like, it didn't add anything to anything. No, except to show that, like, how ruthless of a person Henry could be. Right. Which goes against the point of, like, the reason Claire's in love with him is because he's so good and such a good person. Yes. Unless you think that, like, I guess violence that is done as a form of retribution is okay and I mean that gets into like a big philosophical debate again which we're not Mm going to do right now but I I don't know it just seems like again the proper response here from Claire should have been tell someone in her current timeline in authority Mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the situation which she has clear proof for and like I, I get that the legal system isn't perfect, but deal with it like in a real way instead in of a responsible being all way. vigilante about it. Yeah, I, it's hard to blame. Like honestly, it's hard to blame Claire for anything ever because, like, that's the whole point of the book, right? Is that she is a product of Henry, right? Like, because Henry yeah. has groomed her, like Henry has made her into this person, and it tries to act like Claire does it to Henry too. But, again, she only does that because Henry tells her to. So it's like, 
the whole situation is fucked up. It it's not good. <laughs> And there's never any discussion of, like, what did that guy end up doing? Because clearly he is a loose cannon. Right. Who already, like, went and beat her up. Like, who's to say he wouldn't either do something worse, take it out on somebody else, or, Well, I like... think the fact that, like, they had everybody come look at him and, like, she showed the girls what happened and whatever. It's supposed to be, like, a whisper network sort of situation where it's, like, you know, that sort of thing where girls in a group tend to know who the problems are in that group. I guess. And just don't be alone with them, you know? You know, that sort of thing. Um, But, like, yeah, obviously then eventually this guy went to college and, like, probably did this to some other girl, like, you know? It's not great. It's just the whole thing. The whole thing was a mess. Anyway, I didn't relate to any characters in this book. I hate this, but I kind of related to Henry in his 20s a little bit. Not that I'm, like, an alcoholic and not, like, that I sleep around a lot, but there was just, like, a lot of, um, I don't know, him being, like, a little whiny bitch who, like, didn't really want to deal with responsibility I related to. I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah. I can <laughs> I can vibe on that. Um, yeah. And that was, you know, pre him going back in time to groom his wife. So like, yeah, I hope you don't. I hope you don't relate to that. <laughs> yeah, no, I aggressively do not. <laughs> so, uh, what books would you have rather read this week, beside aside from this monstrosity? Um, well, if we're gonna go with time traveling books, obviously mm. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Sure, uh, they handle time traveling much better. Um, also, there is a series of books. Um, called the Chronicles of St. Mary's series mm. by Jody Taylor. Um, and I remember liking the first book. I think there was something in it that kind of, I think there was something I found vaguely or very problematic about it, but I like continued to read the series even though just, you know, kind of one of those things like where you mm-hmm. recognize it and you're like, I gotta keep, I gotta finish the series though. Um, is, uh, the first book's called just one damn thing after another. And it's about a woman who joins this like time traveling association and they go back and they do, they, they um, go on missions to learn more about the past and they're kind of like trained to infiltrate any time period, um, any like society, that kind of thing. Mm. And there's like a conspiracy. <laughs> they're pretty good. <laughs> what about you? Um, I have a ton of stuff that I would recommend this week. Um, some of it's books, some of it's not, and I'm probably not going to go through all of it. Uh, top of the list, I'm going to mention Kindred by Octavia Butler. That's not going to be, like, my mm. big pick this week because I just plugged Octavia Butler last week, but that is, like, my favorite time travel book of all time by far. Um, I also just – because, again, this, like, the whole time travel thing made me think of a lot of other stuff. Like, you know, like Doctor Who. This is very River Song, Doctor Who, whatever. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Also, the movie Your Name, if you haven't seen it, as far as like time travel romances go, it is one of my favorites. It's an animated movie. Um, hmm. It's great. Check that out. Um, a lot of others that I was thinking of, but then the one that I kind of want to focus on, I guess, is The Vintner's Luck by, I think it's Elizabeth Knox. And it is actually not a time travel uh, book. Wow, then what are we even doing? I know, I know. But it is it is <laughs> a um yeah, Elizabeth Knox. Um it's a book of it's a very like lit fic sort of book, but in a genre fr- thick way, right? So like this okay. is very this is very lit fic, but it's obviously like sci fi genre fic, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of the same idea. Um and I will say right off the bat, I know some people have problems with this book because kind of the morality that it lands on at the end could be read as like slightly homophobic and I do I have heard those viewpoints and I do kind of agree to some point but I do still really like this book um it's about a it's like set in the 1800s and it's this guy who owns or who eventually comes to own a vineyard and um Mm -hmm. he when he's 18 I think he meets this angel one night and he makes a wish 
or asks the angel something along those lines that he will get to see the angel every year from then on out. So him and the mm-hmm. angel meet up one night a year for the rest of his life. And they fall in love. And it oh also my. goes through, like, his whole, like, all the stuff that's going on in this village and whatever. And mm-hmm. then it gets into kind of the deal with this angel. And there's a lot of, like, like I said, kind of religious and spiritual stuff going on and, like, debate, philosophical, hmm. and that sort of shit. So it is very lit a lot of purple prose in there. But it is, A, um, I like the characters a lot more, and B... It is significantly shorter than this book. <laughs> I'll say, 284 pages? Yeah. And also, it's, it's described as compelling and erotic. Yeah, it's way more doable than, than uh, <laughs> Time Traveler's Wife. So if this is, this is your sort of jam where you're kind of like into the sort of stuff that's very, oh, but it's all a metaphor for this and, you know, like, not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if that's your jam. Uh, your kiwi jam or grape jam or otherwise. Uh, <laughs> I want to find some. Joke. I looked it up. I don't think you, anyone sells it. I think you have to make it. Darn. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, we are done with this we're book. We're done with this book and we're moving on to the next book, which is going to be a challenge. And I need to tell you guys a story here. Because here's the situation. So like two months ago. Maybe even longer than that. We discussed reading this one particular book that ends up on a lot of worst of lists. Uh huh. The problem was that it is not available in ebook format. So I went ahead and ordered it, and Anna was like, ah ha ha, enjoy whatever. And I was like, yeah, if it's bad, maybe I'll go ahead and challenge us to it. I have not read the book, but I decided to go ahead and order a copy for Anna so that we could do it as a challenge. <gasps> what? So I, yeah, shut up. So I ordered this book, <laughs> and I recruited Anna's husband to hide the book <laughs> in her bookshelf and I told him like switch the covers out with another book like switch the dust jackets and like two days ago I get a text from this bitch that's like <laughs> oh my gosh when did you put this book in my bookshelf with a picture of the book <laughs> so this <laughs> this garbage bag found my super sneaky book because I was gonna do it on air and be like go to your bookshelf get this book bring it back over here open it up oh my god it's not that book at all it's this other book and she was gonna be shocked and surprised on air and she ruined it excellent so we're gonna go ahead and do the book that I chal- that I hid in Anna's bookshelf revealing Eden save the pearls number one by Victoria Foyt uh which is a 2012 YA novel. And I'll go ahead and read the uh, synopsis real quick. It's been a while since we've read a synopsis on, on here. Um, yeah. But here we go. Eden Newman must <laughs> mate before her 18th birthday in six months. Or she'll, be le- <laughs> or she'll be left outside to die in a burning world. But who will pick up her mate? Or sorry, but who will pick up her mate option when she's cursed with white skin and a tragically low mate rate of 15% in a post-apocalyptic totalitarian underground world where class and beauty are defined by resistance to an overheated environment. Eden's coloring brands her as a member of the lowest class, a weak and ugly pearl. If only she can mate with a dark-skinned coal from the ruling class, she'll be safe. Just maybe one coal sees the real Eden and will be her salvation. Her co-worker Jamal has begun secretly dating her. But when Eden unwittingly compromises her father's keeps secret going. biological experiment, she finds her... She finds herself in the eye of a storm and thrown into the last area of rainforest, a strange and dangerous land. Eden must fight to save her father, who may be be humanity's last hope, while standing up to a powerful beast man she believes is her enemy, despite her overwhelming attraction. Eden must change to survive, but only if she can redefine her ideas of beauty and of love, along with a little help from her, quote, adopted aunt, unquote, Emily Dickinson. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually Emily Dickinson or if it's just like, I that's hope her it name. is. I hope it I is. Hope it I is. hope it is. So much. I, I don't, I don't, <sighs> I don't know about this one, Em. Yep, we're going into it, man. <laughs> Listen to the books that you have brought into my life. <laughs> Antigua. 
land of fairies, kings, and somethings. <laughs> the fairies, wizards, and beasts? I can't remember. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is that book called Where that we read that was also bad? The Perfect Letter? That was the second no, one. No, the Perfect Letter was bad. No, Handbook for Mortals. Handbook for Mortals. <laughs> and now, Revealing Eden. I don't... Surely we're going to run out of these types of books nah, eventually. Nah, fam. <laughs> they just keep coming. Oh my god, why? <laughs> I'm very excited for this. Yeah. So that'll be our next book. Uh, you can't, you probably won't be able to read along unless you happen to have already bought this one because it's like only available. As far as I can tell, it's only available from like resellers at this point. Um, so it my takes... co- my edition of it is like very nice. Yeah, yeah, like it's never been read before. Well, I can't imagine why. <laughs> uh, but God. yeah, come on by, check that out. Also, I was looking at um, the author's bio for Time Traveler's Wife, mm-hmm. Audrey Nefeniger's mm-hmm. bio, and it says that she grew up in South Haven where Claire grew up Mm. in the book, and that she lives in Chicago now, like how Claire does now. And also they both have red hair. Well, she dyed it after Time Traveler's Wife when she finished writing it. She dyed it red in honor of Claire. Oh, in honor of Claire? I thought it was... I thought she dyed it away from red so that we wouldn't know she wrote about herself. No, she dyed it. She she dyed it red. She has a time traveling husband. (laughs) No, because at the time she wrote... Well, I guess that wouldn't matter if your husband was time traveling. But I was going to say, at the time she wrote the book, I, I... read somewhere that she like said that it was about her failed relationships and I don't think she was in a relationship at the time that she wrote the book which mm-hmm. again it seems not to be about failed relationships because they end up very much together for the forever fucking book for but fucking ever we're done talking about this one now so we're, oh, yeah, we're you're we're, right you're we're, right yeah <laughs> Well, then, in the words of No, we got Nef- to do our closeout oh, stuff. Oh, <laughs> no, I wanted to do that. I had a quote. Okay, okay, we can do that, but we have to do our closeout stuff first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you have ever tried Kiwi Jam and would like to tell us that about it or recipe. send us a sample, you can, well, not send it through email, but ask or uh, tell us about it through email. Um, <laughs> at Hate Readcast. Nope. 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 Yeah, that's. Yeah, but it's hatereadcast at gmail.com, or you can tweet oh. at us at hatereadcast on Twitter. Um, we also have an Instagram That's where now. the tweets that, come from. Is where tweets come from. We also have an Instagram now, right? Yes, I haven't really done much with it, yeah, but yeah, there, there is a, yeah, it's there at hatereadcast. So if I you wanted it all to be the same. want now. somewhere to follow along with us and you aren't into Twitter, then, you know, that might work. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, as always, to Ben Cope for the use of our theme song. And, and if you are listening to us, uh, us. Fo- on a podcast <laughs> aggregator, go ahead and follow us. And if that mm-hmm. uh, app happens to be iTunes, uh, if you could leave us five a five-star stars. review, that would be very, very helpful and very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps us yeah. to be found by other listeners uh, so that we aren't shouting into the void. Um yeah. That would be great. Yeah, write us a review and talk about how many times we say wing wing instead of penis. Yeah. <laughs> right, now you can right. do your... <laughs> now I can do the quote. Yes. In the words of Audrey Nefeniger, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were coming or I'd have cleaned up a little more. My life, I mean, not just the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why I relate to Henry. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I could see it a little. book on twitter somebody tweeted it um because it was written by roger stone's lawyer what and it seems to be the there seems to be some similarities between it and real life so i thought okay this is what we're gonna do and i looked into it and i decided we're not going to do that because, A, I think it would be too much even for this podcast. It would be too far ah. to go even for us. Um, 
So we're gonna go ahead and do the book that I cha- that I hid in Anna's bookshelf. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Because God. I also <laughs> don't want to give money to Roger Stone's lawyer right now, which is the only way we'd be able to get that book. Oh my god. Um, huh? So maybe if um we can either get that for free or like for like a hundredth episode or something, we'll go ahead and read that one. Ugh.